seven seconds. She has shed her sport coat and uh, pacing on that sideline, hands on her hips, barking out instructions to her team. Casey Hughes, Riley Schill, Kara Marshall, Hannah Fecht, and Megan Scheibelhut. Pretty typical starting five for the Jackets most of the season. And Marietta has a brief lead here, although there seems to be something that's not right. Okay, good job by Casey Hughes to figure it out. It was uh, her headband <laughs> was laying on the floor. Our officials today, Kyle Potcotter, Edwin Yarborough, and Silas Bowers. Hughes. Nice spin move in the key, gets the shot off, rolls it in. 2-1, Yellow Jackets. That's a great take there by Hughes. It, she didn't go too fast, she didn't rush it. She stayed composed and was able to lay it up and in. Turnaround Bunny from point blank range and Enix can't put it home. Here comes Kara Marshall, one of four senior guards for the Jackets. Riley Schill's another one of those four. She buries an early triple. Yeah, and Riley Schill definitely has the ability to score some points, averaging 11.3 per game, leading the team right now in scoring. The Yellow Jackets are a pretty good three-point shooting team. They stunk on Wednesday night. They hit two of 20. That's a big reason for the loss at John Carroll. And I know that's something they're looking forward on uh, moving past quickly. We get a couple of changes here. Scheibel, Hutt, and Hughes leave the floor. And reigning OAC freshman of the year, Lily Edwards checks in, along with Sydney Snyder, sophomore out of Kirtland. Fact, that's a three ball, and it's good. Timeout, Cole Vivian and the Pioneers. It's 8-1 BW, an 8-0 run in the last minute. Yeah, and that's just a great shooting run. And you were mentioning how on Wednesday night, the Yellow Jackets had an issue shooting the three. And, and that's something you don't usually see with this team. There's so many people that can shoot the three ball. If somebody has a cold night, usually someone else can step up. That's the main reason is when the whole team struggles, it's hard to win some games. But already, we're seeing a huge turnaround early in this one. Yeah, the Jackets on average this season are right about 31% as a team from behind the line. That's not outstanding, but it's it's very respectable. They're in the upper quartile of teams in the country. But for whatever reason, they just had one of those nights where uh, things would not go their way on Wednesday. On the other side of the coin, the free throw line, BW is essentially the best in the country. Enix misses another offensive rebound. They kick it out left side. It's an open three for Taylor. She's off guard. More on Taylor's three-point shooting ability in a moment. As Kara Marshall launches and buries a three. And you can't leave Kara Marshall wide open right there. Nobody even close, and she's going to knock that, that one down most of the time. Three threes for the Yellow Jackets in the opening two and a half minutes. Cole Vivian's group right now is standing there thinking, oh boy. As it pertains to the free throw line, the Yellow Jackets are, are barely half a percentage point behind Austin, who is the number one free throw shooting team in the entire country. This fact does a good job underneath the basket there. BW, the number two free throw shooting team in America out of 450 Division III women's basketball teams. All that more remarkable that they didn't get to the free throw line once in that fourth quarter on Wednesday night as Lily Edwards cleans it up. And the Yellow Jackets are on a 13-0 run here. And that's unreal. And, and a lot of shooting from the free throw line and shooting well is based on confidence. And they hope to have that confidence continue into the tournament. Snyder called for the foul on Devin Hefner, her first Team third Here comes Gabby Garrett and Megan Hensel. The changes from Marietta, Enix, and Cummins check out. And let's see here. Looks like Aaron Hahn, the freshman from Louisville, which is different than Louisville. Over in Ohio, it's Louisville. In Kentucky, you say it like you got a mouthful of marbles, Louisville. <laughs> and Luce Deritza, junior forward out of Pittsburgh. 
no alternate pronunciation. Yep. Yep. Hensel top of the arc. The Jackets have a 10-point lead. All three baskets, or I should say all three points for Marietta have come from the free throw line the first three and a half minutes. Izzy Andrews also in the game for BW. She's come onto the scene nicely midway through her freshman campaign. Lily Edwards fouled with her back to the bucket. It was well done to find Edwards, but they should have found her way sooner. She was posted up. She had the position earlier. Uh, the longer you wait, the harder it is for Edwards to continue to hold that spot. So baseline inbound coming here. The Yellow Jackets at 14-2, having a nice season. Their only losses came to the number seven ranked team in the country, Wartburg, and then the loss we've already discussed on Wednesday night. Edwards turns around, and it's an unfriendly rim this time. A little crossover move from Brooks. Trying to find Doritza in the post. Instead, passes down to the end line. Hefner works it up top. This is Hahn giving it up. Hefner misses the mid-range. Another offensive rebound. Boy, Marietta's had three of these already. And their offensive possessions are lengthening. Hefner, underhand from the right side, or I should say from the left side with the right hand. Couldn't finish it off. Yeah, and I don't want to say those offensive rebounds are coming from a lack of effort because there's hustle. I think he gets friendly bounces sometimes, and you've seen some of those friendly bounces so far. Izzy Andrews makes it 15 to three. That was last touched by Marietta. Cole Vivian, it's a uh, marquee day for him today. I mentioned that the Pioneers are in their best three-year stretch in program history. The last three years, the team's combined record is 58 and 25. When you factor in the eight and eight record this season, he has 66 wins and 33 losses as a head coach, which means today is game number 100 as his head coaching career at Marietta. Before he got the job in the spring of 2016, he was the team's top assistant for four years. And had previously worked at Wisconsin Stevens Point, his alma mater, before going to Southern Ohio. Gabby Garrett has it deflected out of bounds as she tried to find some second chance points. Got to give it to him as well as he's got this suit with uh, the white tennis shoes over you know there. It. Yep. It's coaches versus Cancer Week all across college basketball. Seen a lot of uh, a lot of national television coverage, but certainly uh, even the small college level coaches participate in that as often as they can. Absolutely. Garrett just in front of the left elbow. Snyder right, looked good out of her hand, it rattled away. Marietta still doesn't have a basket from the floor in the first five and a half minutes. Maybe Mackenzie Campbell can change their luck. Doritza turns around, and it's off the heel of the rim. That's a good turnaround. It was a good look there for Marietta. They'll want to continue to keep getting those looks, and I'm sure some will fall. Edwards from Garrett, blocked from behind. Good play by Doritza. A.C. Hughes returning, and for the first time today, Sidney Diedrich comes onto the floor. Diedrich, a junior. Over on the east side of Cleveland, she's from Chardon. Had a great freshman year, decent sophomore year, but with Lily Edwards' emergence as well, she's seen a little bit less time and still been pretty effective as a post player. Sid has the ball here, and Hensel never turned and looked for it on a pass that would have landed in her hip pocket. That was one where I think Diedrich tried to pull it back, but it was already coming out of her hand, and that's why it came out so slow. Right side three just stuck between the backboard and rim from Jill Congrove. Marietta still doesn't have a basket from the floor, and the Yellow Jackets are putting some serious separation here. They're on a 17-2 run. The game is 17-3 at the moment. Gabby Garrett comes away with a steal. Boy, this is spiraling out of control quickly. Marietta bringing four new players into the game. Looks like Congrove is the only one to stay on. Jackets making a couple changes too. 
let's see. Haley Ross, Lexus Enix, both back in there. And the Jackets turn that one over. Kelsey Warnick, freshman forward out of Proctorville, Ohio. Bailey Brooks. Actually, you know what? It's Brooks, not Warnick. My mistake. Brooks dribbling it up here. Cummins needs some help. Bounces into the low paint. Diedrich, well defended. Wow. This drought for Marietta is getting a little out of hand here. That is and could be worse. Marshall nearly made that, but now another opportunity as they get the offensive board. Good job by Riley Schill. Hensel got hammered on the way to the hoop. Marietta is 0 for 14 to start this game. Well, and the crazy thing, despite the huge lead for the Yellow Jackets already, they've been playing great defensively. They've hit some big shots on the offensive end, but they have had a couple unforced turnovers as well, so it could be even worse for Marietta at this point. 0 for 14 from the field, 0 for 2 from behind the three-point line, and the Pioneers have hit 3 of 4 from the free throw line. They've only turned it over three times, but the shots they've put up, and many of them inside the key, haven't gone in. It's 18 to 3, and Hensel adds another one, 19 now. And effect back in there. Diedrich, Schill, Marshall, and Hughes rounded out for the brown and gold. This is some kind of first quarter for Baldwin Wallace, considering what they did in the fourth quarter on Wednesday night at John Carroll. Marietta turns it over. The pass was thrown practically out of bounds right in front of BW's bench. It was Haley Ross that stepped out over there. Pioneers make another change. Devin Hefner back in for Jill Congro. They were just saving the fourth quarter for this first quarter and trying <laughs> to pour it on here. I guess. Yeah. It would have been nice to split some of that up. Exactly. Riley Schill. Good little rip down with that ball. Trying to find a way to get a shot off. She does, and she puts it home. It's 21-3. That was good from Schill as she stepped through and made the easy bunny there. From right in front of the right elbow. Oh, my goodness. Haley Ross missed it. Marshall near midcourt. Good ball control. Riley Schill. Not quite. Hannah Feck got the fortuitous bounce. And the Pioneers commit a foul. Marietta right now. Everybody's kind of looking at each other going, well, gee, somebody else needs to make something happen here. Yeah, look internally. Yeah, and I think it, it goes to show you, though, the athleticism of this BW women's basketball team. You look at them, they have good speed. You know, they, are, they have a desire to get down the floor and when the ball is hand affected earlier. They're just really good at that. Hannah shoots a three and puts it home. 24 to three. 125 left in the first quarter. Enix fights it up and finally scores. With a minute 21 left in the first quarter, Marietta has their first basket from the floor. The Jackets lead by 19. Diedrich tried to pour it on, not quite. BW's hit eight of their first 17, three of six from behind the three-point line. Hahn threw it away into the low post where Hannah Fecht was the last to touch it. Well, and one of the reasons Marietta struggled putting the, bas the ball in the basket around the rim is BW is really good at providing help defense. You see another person slide over and offer that double a lot of times. So Marietta needs to look to maybe somebody leaking out in the corner and look for a kick out. Marlo Taylor returns. Inbounding here right side to Cummins. Hefner, up and under, got it. All right, Monkey is off Marietta's back. That's two in a row now after they started 0 for 15. And that was smart going with the scoop with the left hand there. 
Good redirect, Andrews. Not quite, Scheibelhut, I think, the last one to punch that one out of bounds. So the shot clock is off here toward the end of the first quarter, 25.6. Yellow Jacket fans are enjoying this. Pioneer fans don't have any fingernails left, and we are not much into this game. Eight seconds. Skip pass to the right side. Brooks hits the three. Oh, that's huge for Marietta's confidence at the end of the first quarter. It was miserable, but at least they got to double figures with 10 points. Well, and I think they got fortunate as it, as it looked like the ball slipped out of her hand. She was going to pass it away, but because of it slipping, she re-caught it and then reset and then got the shot off, and that probably worked out best for Marietta there at the end. Pioneers actually score the last five points of the quarter, and we head to the second. It's all Yellow Jackets 24-10 to 10 here in Berea. in Berea, we get rolling with the start of the second quarter. It's Baldwin Wallace 24, Marietta 10. The right side, Snyder. Moving it around a bit. This is Gabby Garrett sidestepping traffic. Missed it. Rebound. Out of bounds. Try to keep our eye as best we can on the men's game down at Marietta as well. That's one I think uh, a lot of folks are paying attention to. A Yellow Jacket team that's gotten off to perhaps a hotter start than they expected. As Marietta lays one in there. It's a 7-0 pioneer run. And the second basket for Enix. Jackets are 6-3 and three in conference play on the men's side with a loss to Marietta earlier in the season. They also lost to Mount Union and uh, at Ohio Northern, but they've beaten everybody else first time through conference play. That's a big matchup today, and Ooh. that gym down there, that's always a, a great environment, too. Well, Gabby Garrett was apparently not fouled. She went pinballing off of somebody, but apparently... Uh, Whatever happened was her own fault. All right. Riley Schill, Gabby Garrett, Sabrina Snyder, Lily Edwards, Megan Hensel. On the left wing, this is Hefner. Marlo Taylor hits it. Marlo Taylor, boy, she's been kind of hot and cold this year. Had a few games where she just has not been able to hit a three. She's had a two of nine showing from deep, a two of ten showing from deep, as Megan Hensel strokes a triple. However, Marlo Taylor broke the school record and tied the OAC record a couple weeks ago on Wednesday night, January 15th, when she hit nine threes against Capital. So she certainly has uh, some serious ability. It just hasn't shown frequently enough. You don't want to leave her open, though, just in case. Yeah, nine threes in a game is huge. That was an odd-looking shot from Garrett, but effective. If it goes, it goes. That's right. All points count the same. 29-15. How about an update down from Marietta? BW out front by four, but plenty early in the game. It's 22-18, to 18, and they are just under eight minutes left in the first half.
course, the Yellow Jackets, hoping they can have a similar result down there as to two years ago where Michael Quiring hit that buzzer beater was for the two? upset. I thought it was three years ago. Might be getting close to three years at this point, yeah. I have to go back and look. I thought I thought Quiring might have been a freshman when that happened. Either way, you're right. That was as remarkable a win as UW's men's team has had in a while. It was when Jake Featheroff and Mike Kaminsky and those guys were seniors. Okay, so then that would have been two years ago. Yep. Edwards forces it up in trouble, and it goes in. Boy, the Jackets are having some kind of first half here. 31 to 17. Marietta, after starting 0 for 15, they're now five of their last six offensively. Campbell misfires. Back the other way. Definitely have to give Marietta credit here in this second quarter so far. They've been shooting pretty well. They've been putting points up on the board. It's just the Yellow Jackets can't seem to stop making shots here tonight so far. Also around the OAC, John Carroll and Muskingum tied at 15 after one. Mid-second quarter, Capital leads Ohio Northern 17-16. And so once another three, this is getting silly. BW is starting to heat up. They've hit six of 11 from behind the three-point line, and we've only played for 13 and a half minutes. The defense from Hannah Fecht forces a Campbell miss, and then a foul on the Pioneers. It's 25 to 20, Wilmington over Mount Union. I'll try to get you an update from the Heidelberg-Otterbein game as well. Edwards gives to Hannah. She's wide open, but that got partially deflected. Hmm. Good close down from Doritza. And free throws for the Pioneers. I'll tell you what, and somebody I want to mention is Megan Hansel coming off the bench. She'd started a lot of programs out there. She's a very good player, but it's important to have people like her coming off the bench and provide that spark. And, and just like that, she already has eight points as she kept knocking down some threes the last couple minutes. Yeah, I definitely agree that she has looked pretty good the last, uh, last couple of weeks. You can really see why this coaching staff was infatuated with her as a high school player. Absolutely. Well, at the moment, Heidelberg and Otterbein don't have any live stats up. So I wonder if their game, for whatever reason, either hasn't started or if there's some sort of technical glitch. But we'll try and find out for you. Fact. A little hand check foul. Carol Marshall back in there. Amy Brooks returns too. Well, both Otterbein and Heidelberg have no updates at all on their team Twitter accounts either, so I'm not sure what's going on in a game that's being played in uh, Westerville. Good effort from Diedrich. She's going to the free throw line. Yeah, and that was one where she got bailed out a little bit as I think she went up in the air and was really having to lean and try to scoop it back. It would have been hard to make that shot, but the foul definitely bailed her out. Now she's an opportunity to try to get two at the line. Andrews back in for Schill. Tiffany Bentler's in there for the first time this half. So it's Andrews, Bentler, Diedrich, Fecht, and Marshall. And the first foul shot from Sid. This is a little, uh, little short there. 34-19, give Marietta some credit. They've cut into this deficit a little bit. They trailed in that first quarter at one point, 24-3. That's a travel, you bet. Another mistake for the Pioneers. You know, it's, it's kind of amazing. I realize that they obviously didn't shoot it well in that first quarter, but I, I don't think the Pioneers are playing badly. That's only their fifth turnover in 15 minutes. They've limited BW a few.
few times. They've, they've played okay defensively. They're certainly not out of this game. It, it's hard to overcome an 0 for 15 start from the floor, but you know the score might indicate that you're down 16 points in 15 minutes. I, I think Marietta is probably playing a little better than that might indicate. Yeah, I think so. I also think it's just attributed also to how BW has been knocking down shots and defensively they've helped on the low block, so it's made it harder for them to make some shots. So this is a really good drive by Marlo Taylor. Good ball movement around, but again, they come up empty. That's that's the frustrating part. It's not like they're not getting looks. Becht dribbling out of control, but makes a sweet crossover. And then it's knocked out of bounds by Enix. That was a good feed by Becht. It looked like it was going to be a pretty easy layup, but Enix with a huge recovery, and she was able to get those long arms up and swat that away. Only 4.39 left in the first half as Jill Congrove re-enters for the Pioneers. And bounce pass comes to Marshall. Diedrich drives and kicks back out. It's Marshall for three. Seven threes in the first half for the Yellow Jackets. Seven of 13. Marshall makes it 38-19 as the Pioneers quickly respond. Cutting it back to 38-21. It's five points now for Bailey Brooks. She get a foul on the Pioneers. Lots of different Yellow Jackets are contributing offensively. Nobody has more than, uh, let's see here, I think eight points. Nope, I beg your pardon. Yeah, so Marshall with that three, the stats just refreshed, sorry about that. Marshall has five now, but, or I should say six, but Hensel leads all scorers with eight. And all but a couple of Yellow Jackets have scored at least one. Meanwhile, Marietta fans not thrilled with the foul call there on Marlo Taylor. I think one thing that has been a trouble for Marietta right now, though, is as soon as they score a basket, BW's been transitioning so quickly to the other end, they've had a hard time setting their defense back up. And effect. Up to eight points now, 40 to 21. Down in Southern Ohio, BW 26, Marietta 25, and they've got five minutes left before halftime. Cummins throws it underneath, ball got bobbled, Brooks's three deflected. Good active defense. Sherry Herrer begging for a foul call that never came, and then BW turns it over. Brooks to Taylor. Fakes, drives, and got hacked. And Izzy Andrews, she was coming up the floor. A couple times we've seen her try to push the pace and got a little bit out of control that time. Got her pocket picked, and that's why Marietta is now at the foul stripe here on the other side. All right, Shill, Garrett, Edwards. Pencil and Snyder on the floor for the Jackets. By the way, that matchup last Wednesday against John Carroll was so pivotal because both JCU and BW have identical records now. Both teams are 14 and two. Both teams are eight and one in conference. John Carroll having lost at Ohio Northern. But the Blue Streaks beat BW head to head. Edwards blocked from behind. And a carry. Brooks saying, what do you mean I carried the ball? And admittedly, as you look at John Carroll's schedule, I don't think they played a particularly good strength of schedule. Right. And I know the Blue Streaks are a good team. I don't want to take away from them on that. But they bludgeoned everybody in the non-conference as Edwards lays it in with the exception of the game they lost. I mean, listen to some of these scores. 72-39, 84-47. They beat Pitt Bradford 97-40. They had a somewhat close game with Case, 71-54.
They beat Oberlin 66-33, and they beat Goucher 78-41. I mean, it, none of those games are even competitive. Yeah. So give them credit, they won, but I'm not sure they were challenged the way BW's been challenged. Absolutely, definitely uh, beating up on teams. And speaking of getting beat up, I mean, Gabby Garrett just took another huge fall to the floor. She's been uh, beat around a little bit today, but she's been tough and gone right back up after every hit. 42-23. We'll take a quick time out here in Berea. Two minutes, 55 seconds left before halftime in a game the Yellow Jackets have totally dominated. 42 to 23 over the Marietta Pioneers. Along with Cole McDaniel, I'm Brendan Gulick. We were talking a little bit about OAC championships and how Marietta won the tournament two years ago. John Carroll won the tournament last year. Well, head coach Sherry Herrer has guided her team to six OAC tournament titles, the most recent of which came back in 2015 for all the Yellow Jackets success they have only won the OAC tournament championship once starting in 2009 they won it 99 2000 2001 05 08 and 2015 good pick by Hensel Jackets are still shooting it well six of ten from the floor in this second quarter, as Garrett got fouled, Marietta's climbing their way back in slowly. They're at 25% from the floor for the game. And at the moment, that uh, deficit goes back to 21 points, which is the largest deficit they've faced this afternoon. We saw it last year. We saw they had a really good regular season, and then we saw in the tournament they, they got caught by Ohio Northern. Uh, it's one of those things where they've had a lot of regular season success. They just want to turn things around in the tournament, and I do think this is a great group they have, and they have certainly a chance to win the conference in the tournament this year. Well, having regular season success is uh, something that Yellow Jacket fans have gotten pretty used to under Sherry Herrer, which brings us to a, uh, a point that hopefully things will work out sooner than later, although you never really know exactly when. But entering today, Coach Herrer is sitting on 597 career wins. Hefner gets fouled there in the key. The Yellow Jackets are certainly in control of this game, but it's a long way from being over. But let's just for hypothetical case, let's say if they win today, and if they win at Heidelberg on Wednesday, the team will be home on Saturday next weekend, February 1st, for a 3 o'clock showdown with the Fighting Muskies from Muskingum, where Coach Error could win her 600th game as a head coach if that works out uh, appropriately. If not, team goes to Ohio Northern on Wednesday, February 5th, and then they'll have two home games back-to-back, -back, Wilmington and John Carroll. You won't want to miss that JCU game on Wednesday night, the 12th. Scheibelhut from under the bucket. Good find. Good job by Snyder not to be selfish and take it herself. Yeah, and uh, Coach Harris, she's had a great career. She's done so much for this program, but also goes to all these people who have played for her, all these ladies who have been fantastic under her, her coaching and uh, really just done great things in this program over all the years. Coach Harris is a Hall of Famer. Absolutely. And a travel. And not just hypothetically so, she was inducted last year into the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame. Actually, you know what? A couple years ago, the Ohio, High the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame, excuse me, was uh, back in May of 2017. She's won almost 75% of the games that she's coached in 30 years. That is crazy. <laughs> Four-time OAC Coach of the Year, and her teams have gone to the NCAA Tournament 
14 times in her first 29 years. Snyder turns around, had to let that one fly, and it's a shot clock violation. And while it's far from being a lock, the Yellow Jackets, if they don't win an OAC automatic bid this year, they've put themselves in good position so far, especially with their non-conference resume, to get an at-large berth again. Mm -hmm. it's still a little ways off, but it's, you can certainly see where that foundation's been laid. And she knows that, and that's why she always tries to get them a tough schedule in non-conference, and it seems to work. Oh, oh, my goodness. How does that not go in? Marietta has had a first half they'd love to forget. So two foul shots coming for Jill Congrove. And she's never never shot away from some of the bigger schools. You, you use the word tough for tough schedule. And they played Tufts to UFTS. If you're not familiar, Jumbos are up in uh, the NESCAC. And they've been in the national... Final four the last couple of years. They're unbelievably good. And goes out and plays Wartburg and Wash U and right on down the line. Load it up. Absolutely. Final minute of the second quarter. Jackets by 21. And a foul under the basket. Ooh, it's on the Jackets. It's on Scheibelha. That's one of those tough ones. That's one of those where I thought Scheibel Hutt just had the size advantage and she just got her body into her. And, you know, with that size advantage, oftentimes you're going to see somebody hit the floor. But I uh, hear now Marietta getting their one and one at the line. Well, fifth team foul. It's uh, two free throws here for Marlo Taylor. And she puts the first one home. Give Taylor six so far. Both. Taylor, the team's leading scorer, just over 10 a game. She's having a fairly productive first half. She impressed two with Devin Hefner. Actually, you know what? Not the team's leading scorer, but one of them. Enix, their leading scorer, 13.3. And Hefner having a good first half with 10 points. She averages just under 12 a game. Andrews almost got fouled. This is fact in the corner. And the scorching hot start BW got off to certainly has come back to earth a little bit. They still have a 19-point lead. 20 seconds remaining. Shot clock and game clock are essentially equal. And Taylor's going back to the strike. You know, I'm a little surprised Marietta didn't hold that out and, and use it as like a final shot there because now that gives the Yellow Jackets an opportunity to come down and get a final shot going into half. Totally agree. Schill back in for Andrews. Diedrich, Fecht, Hensel, and Garrett still out there. Two foul shots for Taylor. Okay. So Taylor and Hefner have combined for 18 of the team's 30 points. BW's got 13 seconds before the halftime horn. Three seconds. Riley Schill, right on the money. Baldwin Wallace, 51. Marietta, 30 at the break. And there you have it, and that's probably why you want to hold out and, and try to use the clock up, because BW has the ability to come down and hit that shot, as Schill just did there. It's a two-point swing. Yep, absolutely. Taylor only hit one out of two from the line. The Jackets get a three on the other end. Cole Vivian is red as can be, barking at his team in the huddle. Did not like the effort there in the first half, which started off 0 for 15 from the floor. Only a little bit helped by the fact that Marietta then hit seven of their next 14 shots. Pioneers are somewhat still relevant because they've hit 14 of 16 free throws in the first half. But they are still quite a long ways back, down 21. Leading scorer in the game is Devin Hefner with 10. A number of players have eight points. Marlo Taylor for Marietta, and three different players with eight apiece for the Jackets, including Schill, Fecht, 
and Hensel. Six points for Kara Marshall, six points for Gabby Garrett. Marietta has one assist on seven made baskets. And they've turned it over eight times, which has become uh, <laughs> it's become a heck of a uh, heck of a lot of work for the Yellow Jackets offensively. And BW has nine assists on 17 made buckets. That's five total points. Let's see. The Yellow Jackets have nine points off turnovers. Marietta has scored six off of those mistakes. And uh, on the boards, the Jackets are plus five, 23-18. So we'll step aside during halftime. Come on back in uh, just under 15 minutes, and we'll get you rolling with the start of the second half. Marietta on the road looking for retribution. So far, it's not working. BW by 21, 51 to 30 at the break.
ready to start the second half between the Marietta Pioneers and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. It's 51 to 30. The Jackets are way out front thanks to a hot start to the game, and Marietta really hasn't chipped into the lead all that much since then. Brendan Gulick along with Cole McDaniel. Cole, how about your thoughts there in the first half? I think one big thing for the Yellow Jackets is they have the awareness on defense. They've had the hands up. They've been doing a great job of moving, and something that sticks out of my mind is a lot of those backdoor cuts, they've been intercepting those because they're not losing their mark. So I think as long as they keep up the defensive side, the Yellow Jackets should be fine. Well, they certainly have contested a lot of those kinds of shots pretty well. Marietta misses two from pretty close to the basket. Pioneers have missed a lot of point-blank shots in this game so far. And a couple feet of the basket. Lily Edwards starts the second half. Turns around and she misfires, but the Pioneers knock it out of bounds. Cole Vivian, not a happy guy over on that far sideline, and I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him at all, especially when that's just a miscommunication. You fight your own teammate for the ball, goes out of bounds, and those are mistakes that really hurt when you're trying to get back into a game. In the meantime, we did find out that Heidelberg is playing later tonight against Otterbein. Even though there are several places online that list that as a one o'clock game, it's not being played till this evening. We're gonna jump ball officially, four seconds to shoot it. So that's the reason we don't have a score update for you because there isn't one to give you. That's a good hustle play there from Kara Marshall. But the funny thing is, coming down, ended up getting a jump ball because she landed on the ball and it was under. <laughs> but we know whatever works. And Yellow Jackets again with another opportunity on the offensive end. Inbounds goes to Fecht. One minute gone, third quarter. Edwards might have gotten away with a walk, and she missed the layup again. Then Lilly commits a foul, and you can see the frustration there building a bit. Yeah, and Edwards has made some good moves today. The one thing that she's a great player, the one thing she does have to improve on is I think sometimes going to that left hand and finishing. A lot of times she does leave it short, as we saw back-to-back -back times there. Goes to the right hand, she usually makes them left hand. Still working on that at the moment. Diedrich replaces Edwards on the floor for the moment. Hefner, the right side, Taylor for three. And Effect clears it away. And a step back, triple try, no. Not a bad idea though from her, she'll hit those more often than not. Hefner with a great find, Taylor ran the whole length of the floor and scores. That was the best transition bucket of the day for Marietta, they got down the floor quickly. From the right corner, KC Hughes answers. 54-32 BW with two minutes gone in the third. Marshall commits the foul as Taylor drove to the bucket. And we'll see more free throws. The Marietta Pioneers, who have hit 14 of 16 from the line so far today. It's been really their only saving grace in this game. Meanwhile, you look at some of the other teams in the league, and I think the team that is most surprising is Mount Union this year, and surprising in a negative light. I don't know if I can tell you the last time Mount Union was off to as bad a start in conference play. I mean, I, I'm not exaggerating. Maybe ever. They opened the OAC 0-5, losing to Carroll at Northern, at Wilmington, at Heidelberg, and at home against BW. They've at least won three of their next four in the league to put themselves in a slightly better position. This is a Mount Union team that is almost always a factor in OAC championship runs and it wasn't that long ago they were in the NCAA Sweet 16. Diedrich lost it, got it tied up, jump ball the other way. Although that's a tough start for Mount Union, at least the possible saving grace for them coming down the stretch is that you get a second opportunity going through the conference and 
if they can get a run and, and put piece together some games there, they possibly could make something happen and maybe force their way into the tournament still. Well, the likelihood that they'll get in the tournament is increasing by the day, that's for sure. It's Haley, or rather uh, Camille Cummins turns around, missed it, and the Pioneers could call for the foul. They're a better team than Muskingum for sure. And frankly, I, I think Heidelberg kind of stinks. Right. I know Heidelberg beat them. I would have a hard time believing that that would happen a second time. Mount Union's wins in conference. I mean, they beat Muskingum by 30, 100 to 70. They slip past Otterbein, and the Purple Raiders beat Capital by three. It's Diedrich turns and scores. Right now, if the OAC tournament started today, the Purple Raiders would be in, and they would be playing here against BW. Step back high, arcing jumper. He's whistled dead for going too high on the rebound there. Actually, you know what? I have to I have to rephrase that because if the tournament started today, John Carroll would be the one seed, not BW. Right. So Purple Raiders as an eight seed would go to University Heights. But there are still nine games left in the regular season to determine seeding. Hughes missed the layup. And a lot can change in nine games. Absolutely. Cummins was out of control there. Gives to Hefner, who had more, uh, a little bit more composure. She missed the layup. If you're joining us late, it's 56 to 34, in large part because of Marietta's awful start to the game when they missed their first. 15 shots. They hit three free throws, but did not hit a shot from the floor until there was one minute and 21 seconds left in the first quarter. They responded by hitting seven of their next 14 to close the first half, but still, they were down by quite a ways. And it hasn't gotten much better because the Yellow Jackets are shooting it well. PW's already got nine three-pointers. Trying for a 10th. Absolutely. Sidney Dietrich, ring him up. That's just a great, good take. We've seen her shoot a couple of day. Hasn't had much success from three herself, but that one able to go. And, you know, everybody seems to have confidence today with the three ball. Enix, count it, and the foul. Alexis Enix, all OAC player out of. Fort Fry High School to the free throw line for one more. It was a strong finish there, and that was well done. Is that something Marietta struggled with from that right-hand side today? A lot of what we've seen is they've missed some easy ones because they've been hitting the lower part of the backboard, so it's hit the side of the rim. That one actually got up to the square and bounced in, so it was a good finish. Foul on uh, Hensel. No, I beg your pardon. Foul is on Marietta's Cummins, the way the referee pointed straight down. I thought he meant the ball is staying down here. Even some of the Pioneer players got up and started cheering. Izzy Andrews works it around. Good backdoor cut. Casey Hughes to Kara Marshall for two. Great vision from Hughes, an outstanding bounce pass, and Marshall just saw that opportunity and another good finish. Enix into double figures with 10. 61-38 as we hit the five minute mark in the third quarter. Good ball rotation, Andrews finds Marshall. Kara strokes another one. Ball How about these jackets? Yeah, ball movement's been on point in the last couple minutes. That's been really fun to watch. Timeout, Pioneers. It's a big lead for BW, their largest of the game. 26 points, 64-38 in Berea.
Yellow Jacket third quarter is essentially going the same way the first few have. Five of 11 from the floor, including three of five from three-point range. And Baldwin Wallace has once again gone into double-figure three-point makes in a ball game. They've hit 11 more today. Enix in trouble. Hefner dribbles it out of bounds. And for the Yellow Jackets offensively, I think in that first quarter, Marietta wasn't getting set well defensively. I think they were leaving people open, but this has really been more of BW just carving up the Marietta defense here in the third quarter. It's the fifth time this year that the team has made at least 11 threes. Once they've hit 10, but it ties their season high the fourth time they've had 11. 11 against Muskingum, Capital, and Otterbein. Although admittedly today they've had their best three-point shooting percentage. They've done 11 of 22. Coming off a two for 20 game from three-point range. Go figure. Jackets turn it over again. They've been okay about protecting the ball today. That's their sixth turnover. If they don't turn it over again the rest of the game, even though we've got almost 14 minutes left of action, that would be a season low for them. But admittedly, after some pretty sloppy games in that regard earlier in the season, they've gotten that under control for the most part. Here's Hefner against Snyder. High off the window, banks it in for two. 64 to 40. That's 12 now. The sophomore Devin Hefner out of Parker's, uh, excuse me, Parkersburg South High School. Edwards in some trouble. And she turned over. So the referee called her for a travel. It's been a tough night for Edwards. We we see like normal, she's got good post moves. What she struggled with tonight is I think she's had good moves. She's gotten past her defender, but the long arms and the height of the defender behind has oftentimes been swatting the ball, and that's what she's had issues with. So maybe the use of a pump fake and drawing a foul could be beneficial, but been tough work for her down on the low block. Rotating around up top, Aaron Hahn in the game two. Under three minutes to go, third quarter. Duritz, uh, not quite. Snyder. Riley Schill was open, Marshall driving. Hensel flings it up top. Now Schill in the corner. Hensel turns around, Riley thought about it. Eight to shoot. Hensel catch and shoot three. It's a 12th Yellow Jacket three ball. Their best three point shooting performance since the team made 13 against Ohio Northern last January. And if they keep shooting like this, I, I definitely think they're gonna surpass that. Still have another full quarter to play after this. Well, the, the deal is everybody's getting it done. It's not like they've got one player that's stroking all of them. This is really impressive. Substitution brought Ellen Vichel into the game. She takes that shot and misses it short, lands out of bounds. Inside two minutes left in the third quarter. 67 to 40. Riley Schill tucks it, got fouled, and has two free throws coming. That's just a good drive, and I think one thing you saw from the Yellow Jackets in the last possession was just swinging the ball around and, and keep it around the three-point line for the most part, and sometimes that pinches the defense out, and uh, she used her quickness and ability to get around the defender. Gabby yeah, Garrett returns for Hensel. So Riley Schill at the free throw line. Puts this one home. I'll tell you what, I'm going to really 
miss watching her play. The senior out of Elyria Catholic has played with uh, incredible passion during her time as a yellow jacket. She's been quite a leader, certainly statistically, but also off the floor. Her teammates gravitate toward her, really love and respect her. When we talked about this team being great from the free throw line, and she'll definitely one of those is she's shooting about 90% from the free throw line this season. A little miscommunication there. By the way, it's basically all reserves here for Marietta. The five players on the floor have combined for two points as Mackenzie Campbell dribbles it into the forecourt. Aaron Hahn is out there too. Held up top here by Vichel. Now a left side, Haley Ross three, misfires. Doritza in there as well. By the way, the Yellow Jacket team record for most threes made in a game is 15. They did that against Wilmington a long time ago. And a fact hits another one. 13 threes for the Jackets. 15 threes against Wilmington during the 2001-2002 season. The 13 threes they've made in this game as we get a whistle for a foul are the most since BW made 14 on December 9th, 2017. Haven't had a year or a game like this in a long time. They made 14 threes in a game twice that year. But 15 remains the school record. And they did it almost 20 years ago. What you love to see about it is, is none of these threes have really been, there hasn't been any hesitation. They've all been in rhythm. They've been comfortable. As soon as the catch happened, like Hannah Feck there, she knew she was going up for the three. And when you have that confidence, you oftentimes hit more threes than if you're kind of questioning whether you should shoot or not. 73-42. Right side, Cummins. Dishes down low where Diedrich fouls Enix and one. So Alexis Enix stands at the free throw line. And Emma Cannon, a freshman from Worcester, gets a chance to check in here. Well, looking back through the OAC record book, obviously he's only been doing it for three years complete, now three plus as the head coach of the Pioneers, but Cole Vivian's winning percentage of 66% is actually the third best in OAC women's basketball coaching history behind just Sherry Herrer and Capitals' Dixie Jeffers. That's pretty cool, good for him. I'm sure he'd love to have the same kind of run that those two coaches have had over the years. Three seconds left, third quarter, and the Jackets make a mistake there. They haven't made many mistakes all game, that's for sure. And right now, the outcome of this game is not in question. It's a 28-point lead, 73 to 45, and we're on record watch here in Berea.
Moving along at the start of the fourth quarter from Ersprung Gymnasium in Berea. Along with Cole McDaniel, I'm Brendan Gulick. What a day for the Jackets. They've led by as many as 31 points. It's currently a 28-point game, 73 to 45. And we are keeping our eye on a uh, potential team record of number of threes made in a game. And effect has hit a couple today as Edwards has the ball knocked out of her hand at the free throw line. Lily's had a tough day. Three of 13 from the floor after that one got blocked. And a foul whistled on Andrews. The school record is 15 threes in a game set during the 01-02 season. The OAC conference record for most team three-pointers in a game is 17. Heidelberg did it against Marietta back in the 02-03 season. Yellow Jackets are 13 of 24 from three-point land this afternoon. It's a foul on BW. And again, it's, it's not totally alarming in the sense that we've seen them hit double-digit threes now six times in a game this season. But they're coming off of so far and away their worst three-point shooting performance. They were two of 20 on Wednesday in their first conference loss of the year. Well, and what's great to see is some teams get in a funk and it happens for several straight games, but I mean, talk about bouncing back as quickly as possible. Edwards finds Hughes, she's open, and it's too far. Boy, everybody in this gymnasium is waiting to see more three balls get poured in, although I'm not sure the context has made fans aware of what's at stake here. Back to finds Edwards, that was way too easy, and Lily scores it. Maybe that'll get her confidence going. That's an offensive foul. That was clever from Casey Hughes as she slid her feet, and as soon as she took the bump, she went backwards and, and got the call, and that's just a, an experienced veteran move right there. I think I just said it was the 01 02 season when they did that against Wilmington was actually the 2002-2003 season. The reason I bring that up, that was actually uh, a record day for the conference as well. BW hit 15 of 21, 71% of their three-pointers. It's a single game OAC record as a team as Riley Schill got fouled in the backcourt there. The Jackets own a number of OAC records offensively. That is one of them. They also scored the most points ever in an OAC game, 108. It's Ohio Northern back uh, probably when some of these players weren't yet born. It's the 95-96 season. Probably most of these players. I would think so. I don't want to step on myself there, but I, I would say there's a pretty good chance most of them weren't around then yet. Hughes, good backdoor cut from Marshall. Edwards is there, turns around, fires it up over the top of the rim, and a foul on the Pioneers. Devin Hefner, the leading scorer uh, for most of the game for Marietta. But Alexis Enix has picked it up a little bit. Enix has 13. Hefner has 12 points, but half of them are from the free throw line. She's three of 14 from the floor. Marshall is open, and Kara makes it a 14 three-point night. One shy of a school record. Eight minutes left in regulation. The Jackets lead by 33. And one on the other end. Well, and all those threes that Kara Marshall's been making, they've all been on the far side of the court. It's all been in the corner, so it's kind of been her hot spot today is close to the benches. This has been really cool. Casey Hughes with one. Riley Schill has two. Marshall has four threes. Fecht's hit three. Hensel's hit three. And Diedrich has one of her own. 14 of 25 from behind, rather 14 of 26 from behind the three-point line. Wow. Sherry Herrer wants an explanation on something. Again, the last time BW hit at least 14 three-pointers in a game 
They hit 14 of 34 at Muskingum December 9th, 2017. They also did it against Worcester on November 19th, 2017. So these seniors were in their freshman seasons. They have been part of some of the best shooting teams in the history of this program. Marshall, sideline inbounds. Edwards looking around. Underneath, Marshall, no. Little jump stop on the baseline. Hefner missed, got her own rebound. Able to put it back in. 78-49, that's 16 points for Devin Hefner. They have to give her some credit. At times she has been out of control occasionally, but she's provided a lot of energy, tried to get out on the break, and right there you saw with her getting her own rebound and putting it back up. Uh, she's continued to fight all game long. Now here's the other side of the equation here. You know, we, we have at times this season seen some pretty standout individual performances. Had effect a couple weeks ago. Had one of those as Riley Schill swirls around but couldn't get it to drop in. And effect, a fifth year senior. She tied the school record with seven threes in a game. Seven of 10 against Otterbein a couple weeks back. Bodies go crashing to the floor. Hannah hit seven of 10 from three in 18 minutes against the Otterbein Cardinals two weeks ago today. This team, obviously we've Reference they can shoot it from three. We've also talked about the fact that they're the number two free throw shooting team in the country. There have been few teams that have been able to keep them under control offensively all year. And that's that's the crazy thing too is just because of how well they've been shooting the three today and that's gonna be the story of this game. I mean, they've still been putting up really great numbers from the free throw line. They're 12 of 14 about 86%, so they've been shooting well, whether it's been from the three or at the free throw line as well. Garrett feeling a little pressure behind her. BW with a huge lead, sitting on 14 threes, one shy of tying a school record. Diedrich bobbled it out of bounds, no foul. Seventy-eight to forty-nine with 6.17 to play. Fecht, Andrews, Hughes, Diedrich, and Garrett for the Jackets. And on the other side, Brooks will dribble it into the forecourt. Aaron Hahn running up the floor with her. Enix, Hefner, and Taylor still out there. This is Hefner. Yeah, never really had much of a chance, never got to the rim. Good help defense there from Gabby Garrett as she slid over. Garrett was in trouble. Wow, good play by Hughes to keep it in bounds. 5.50 to play. Casey got fouled, driving down the left side of the key. Yeah, Casey Hughes with the one-handed catch. Browns could have used that this year. <laughs> that was almost Odell Beckham style as she more than extended her arm all the way back. Good play. Diedrich, Hughes. Andrews, they left her alone for a moment. Garrett's open for the record. Gabby Garrett with a 15th three of the day. 5.23 to play in the fourth quarter. Marlo Taylor misfires. Garrett the rebound, here she comes, 81 to 49. Hughes, <laughs> she wanted it and saw the open lane, took the higher percentage play instead. Yeah, he's definitely thought about it and everybody would have really wanted to see the three there, but she made the right basketball decision. The lane was wide open, she went and drew the foul. So good play by Casey Hughes there, but everybody in this place holding their breath as the threes continued to drop. 15 of 27 from three point range. The Yellow Jackets have tied the school record, which was set 18 years ago. 
Hughes misses the free throw. It's still 81 to 49. Meanwhile, Marietta started the game 0 for 15 from the floor. And so this afternoon's contest is as much about Marietta's bad start as it is about the Yellow Jackets never taking their foot off the gas here. And frankly, I'm not surprised to see that a lot of these young ladies are still in the game because the Jackets lost a frustrating game on Wednesday night. Hefner missed it, got it back, missed a second time, and got fouled. I mean, I can't think of anything the Jackets have done poorly today. They've only turned it over 11 times in 35 minutes. They've out-rebounded Marietta 41 to 30. They've shot 47% from the floor, 15 of 27 from three, 12 of 14 from the free throw line, and they lead this game by a mile. <laughs> yeah. What do you want? What more do you want? I mean, it's been a nearly perfect game for them. 32-point lead after the free throw there from Hefner. Let's see if they can break the record. Fact. It's the screen, moves around. Andrews for the record, and she hit it! 16! The Yellow Jackets, a new school record by themselves and one shy of the OAC all-time mark. From the left corner, Goodard misses too long. 85 to 50. Garrett got fouled. I think one of the best things is, is it's not just one person. We talked about how it's been this whole collective pie and it just keeps getting sliced up by each different uh, person hitting the three. So they've all been really contributing factors tonight. So it's great to see. It's been such a team collective thing that they're doing this and setting a record. One three ball shy of tying the OAC record for most threes made in a game. Garrett has 10 points. Give her 11, 87 to 50. And a whistle stops things for a moment. Although I'm not sure why. Oh, just the substitution, okay. So Tiffany Bettler in for Gabby Garrett. Andrews, Scheibel, Hutt, Bettler, Snyder, and Hensel for the Jackets. 4.09 left in regulation. Raya Goodert, give it over on the right side. This is Cannon for three. Might as well let it fly. Third three of the game for Marietta. 87-53. Shooting's contagious. <laughs> Scheibel Hutt wanted to throw behind her, but got caught up and shuffled her sneakers. And not much Scheibel Hutt could do there as that ball was passed into her. She was trying to turn the wrong way and uh, turn way farther, so that's a that was tough for her. So it was one of those situations where not much she can do. Jordan Kaiser. Emma Cannon. Here comes Andrews. Hensel for the OAC record. Not quite. Three fifteen to play. The outcome of this game not in jeopardy, but the Yellow Jackets are chasing a record here. Cannon. Three ball was deflected. Never got to the rim, and BW's got it. If you're just joining us, the Jackets have hit a school record 16 threes, and they are one shy of tying the all-time OAC record for most threes made in a game. Bentler had it stripped away. And that's one where Bentler should have kicked that out. Uh, unfortunately for her, got caught and stripped there, but still two and a half minutes left to go. Yellow Jackets still have plenty of time to try to hit another three. Timeout, Sherry Herrer, and it's just a rolling timeout. She wants to get 
A substitution on here. Maraid La Liberty on for Megan Hensel. Just 2.16 left to play. Well, the cool thing here is, I mean, this is almost more fun for us than anybody else. Nobody in the gym knows the Jackets are 1-3 away right. from a conference record. But they certainly know it's been a day they'll never forget from behind the three-point line. A little pump fake from Scheibelhut. She got fouled. BW has stroked it from the free throw line too. 15 of 18 so far. And now the Jackets are going to clear the bench. We're going to see what kind of depth they have. They want to put up another three ball. 16 of 29. It's a, it's a situation where the fans, they might not know that, but they'll go back, they'll look at the story, they'll see that it's a record and be like, hey, I was there at that game. They'll look back for, for years to come and remember being at a record game because it's one of those situations where it's obviously hard to get to. Who knows how long it would take to even get close or possibly even break this in the future. Well, and, you know, the, the amazing thing for me here is that it's been such a team effort. Right. And Kara Marshall leads the Jackets with 14 points, five players in double figures, four of them have 11. Garrett, Schill, Fecht, and Hensel. But it feels like everybody has shot it today from well beyond the three-point line. Left corner, Goodard, with a minute 49 to play. And she gets fouled on the left side of the key. Marshall's hit four of five from deep. Garrett, one of one. Riley Schill, two of three from three. And effect three of six, Megan Hensel three of four, Casey Hughes one of three, Diedrich and Izzy Andrews each one of two. Jackets bringing on a number of different players here, including Mackenzie Hans, a freshman from Magador. Told you about La Liberty when she checked in. Reagan Schill, Riley's younger sister, is on the floor. Kelsey George, a freshman from Centerville, is in the game. Free throws good there for Mariah Goodard. And Shelby Heminger dribbling the ball up the floor here for BW with a minute 45 to go. She goes into contact. It's an offensive foul. 87-55. Jackets got out to a 24-3 lead. Marietta started 0 for 15. And we thought that perhaps this game had gotten out of control early because of Marietta's lack of execution on the offensive end. Didn't know at that time that it was going to be a record-setting day offensively for BW, magnifying what has been a lopsided game. Fouls on Hans, her first. Both teams in the bonus here. We've only got a buck 25 left to play. Hefner had a, a decent game, 17 points, but she did it on 5 of 20 from the floor. Seven rebounds, many of them offensive rebounds on her own misses. Alexis Enix, 13 points, 6 of 14 from the floor. Marlo Taylor had 10 points, but seven of them were from the free throw line. Marietta's hit a lot of free throws in this game. 21 of 27 from the strike. Emily Lyon rolls it in with a right hand, and the team loves it over on the far side. 89-56. Lyon out of Highland High School down in the Hinkley area. It's great to unload the deeper part of your bench and have somebody go on and score. Everybody in the gym loves that, especially the people on the bench who practice with them every day. Parker Mock, freshman, turns around and scores. Heminger up top to Lyon. Hans, Heminger, 15 to shoot. Jackets trying to get a good look. And they turn it over in the corner. I have a hunch they're going to be stuck on 16 threes. I agree with you, but definitely an impressive day. Certainly impressive to get that school record. And uh, it's one of those situations where going in that first half, they were, they were shooting really well, but I think that Riley Show buzzer beater going into halftime kept that confidence high, so they just came out of halftime and just kept shooting lights out. Couldn't agree more. Shot clock is off here. We'll see if they play it out. 
calling a foul, not for the jump ball. He said that Hans went in too hard. It'll be two Marietta shots. Well, the referee's going to get together here. Initially, at least, the foul was called on Hans. I think they're saying there was no possession that had been. Uh, Yep, okay. So with no possession on the floor, they can't go down and shoot free throws. It was a loose ball foul, which means Marietta has to inbound it and go the length of the floor. Right. Reagan Schill comes back on for Heminger. The lead is 89 to 58. Elsewhere around the conference today, John Carroll pounded Muskingum 73-47. The Jackets stay in a first place tie. From the left corner, high arcing three missed. There's a foul underneath. Ohio Northern, 55, Capital 52. There's two seconds left in that game. With a minute to go, Mount Union and Wilmington are tied at 75. Heidelberg and Otterbein tip off around 5 o'clock Eastern time. One more update from the men's game. Jackets are probably going to fall short. They're down seven with 10 seconds to go. 81-74, losing at Marietta right now. Jackets led that game by seven at halftime, but didn't get off to a very good start in the second half, and it's cost them. And despite looking like that's going to be a loss there, you have to give them props as that's a tough place to go to and play Marietta on the road, and they fought tough and, and hung with them all game. Heminger, she could shoot it if she wants it. <laughs> the Jackets choose not to. It's a record day in Berea. The final score, the Yellow Jackets 89, and the Pioneers 60. Sherry Herrer wins her 598th career game. If she wins on Wednesday at Heidelberg this week, she could win number 600 at home next Saturday against Muskingum. The Yellow Jackets are 15 and two. They go to nine and one in conference play. Marietta falls to eight and nine. They are four and six in the OAC. That was a fun one. It was a fun one, that's for sure. And I think looking back at it, it goes to show you that nothing much to worry about about that John Carroll loss. It's, it's just a little blemish on the, on the resume. It's one of those things where they came back and they bounced back in a significant way today, setting that record. So they look good. And if they continue to play like this, they can continue to have success this season. Baldwin Wallace 89, Marietta 60. Jackets are back home Saturday, the 1st of February against the Muskies for a 3 p.m. tip. They'll play at Heidelberg on Wednesday night. For Cole McDaniel, I'm Brendan Gula. Congratulations to BW on a day that will hopefully live for quite a while in the, uh, in the storied annals of this program. Baldwin Wallace excited for all that is to come. And Certainly responded nicely after a tough loss earlier this week. A 29-point victory. Again, for Cole McDaniel, I'm Brendan Gulick. We'll see you next time here in Berea. Yellow Jackets, big winner today.